This is Sound Experience, the show that explores the vast world of audio production through the experiences of our guests and the ears of your host, mixing engineer and producer Tim Dolbert. Hey, welcome to Sound Experience, powered by Intertalk Radio, the voice of the music biz. I am your host, Tim Dolbear, coming to you live from Eclectica Studios in Austin, Texas. Ah, and it's great to be back with yet another show, with another fantastic guest. And I, I hope people listening, you listening, my friends listening, my family, everyone, you enjoy this as much as I enjoy it. I get to ask the questions, uh, your questions, my questions. Uh, to these studio professionals and dig in deep and it's just enjoyable to be able to pick each other's brains and all of us learn from each other's studio experiences. So I'm very, very grateful that you're with me today. And real fast, I want to shout out to some of our sponsors. We have FrontEndAudio.com, your ultimate pro audio dealer. The Blackbird Academy, hands-on training for studio and live sound, which I was just at teaching a couple days ago. So hi to all my friends out there at Blackbird Academy, Great River Electronics, and also Source Connect by Source Element, the only sync-accurate HD video and audio software streaming solution for creative media professionals, such as us, everyone listening. So I don't really have a question from a person today, and that was okay because I wanted to fill up this time just diving in deeply with our guest today. Um, So I'm going to... uh, basically just jump right into that this time so today's show you probably knew because we've been advertising this uh i have on who's considered the most recorded drummer in history a session drummer extraordinaire his name is john robinson he goes by jr and he has been on so many albums it's it's just disturbing if you look through his discography you'll see that he he he's Michael Jackson, Bad, he appeared on, uh, Faith Hill, David Lee Roth, Celine Dion, Bonnie Raitt, Michael Bublé, Babyface, Daft Punk, Eric Clapton, uh, Mariah Carey, Seal, Glenn Fry, Barbara Streisand. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. It's a f- phenomenal, amazing uh, group of, of work that he's, that he's done. And he's also bringing his talents to the inner talk radio staff he's actually coming on board with his own show to talk more about what he does and to interview the people that he knows in the industry and pick their brains about stuff so he's going to be telling us all about his show that's going to be starting on intertalk radio and but today i get to dive in deep and pick his brain about being a session drummer and i have a list of questions from from you all from facebook uh and i'm going to just and sit back and enjoy this one. So I would really, really like to welcome to the show, Jr. Are you with me, Jr. Tim, I am here. It's uh, it's an honor. There to you be are. On... Yeah, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I hear you. All right, beautiful. Yeah, it's an honor to be on Sound Experience, and um, man, thank you, thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Let's start real fast by um, tell me about the show that's coming on that you're going to be hosting on Intertalk. Well, my show's called Vinyl Night, and um, I'm kind of, you know, addicted to vinyl. And vinyl has been a big part of my whole life and career, and uh, vinyl is, has made its um, kind of head, uh, you know, it, it's it's resurged with, you know, it's 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 kind of reminds mm-hmm. me of when Boogaloo came back, and it was it was it was pissed off, you know. Everybody's, uh, you know, per, they're pressing vinyl again. There's, you know, hundred and 128 grams and it's and and, and uh, or, or sorry 180 gram vinyls and even higher. So mm-hmm. my show is going to feature you know some of the most influential people in the music industry. Um, you know, of course, it'll be drummers, guitar players, bass players, keyboard players, recording engineers. I'll probably delve into some singers and definitely producers and and people that have you know changed the world and uh, and connected. And um, I think everybody will, will will like it a lot. Fantastic. Fantastic. When does the show uh, start, and when's it going to be on? Uh, obviously, on Entertalk Radio, we can find your show anytime. But when it streams live, when will that be? Uh, so live streaming will be um, every Wednesday Pacific time from uh, two to three o'clock. Great, great. And it starts this Wednesday. We start this Wednesday. Uh, my first guest uh, <laughs> has been, man. He's you know I, almost like a surrogate father to me. Uh, Probably the most famous recording engineer and producer, uh, uh, Bruce Swedeen. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And we had talked earlier, and I had mentioned I, I had saw him at AES. Either it was last year or maybe it was NAM last year. But, yeah, I saw him, and, yeah, definitely prayers go out to him and his wife. Just amazing, amazing people. Very, very cool. And changed the industry. Just changed it, shaped it. Very, very cool. Yeah. So you ready to jump into uh, some drum talk? Oh, 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 that's what we're going to do. I thought we were going to talk yeah. some, like some gearhead stuff, man. Oh, that too. Oh, that no, too. No. It's all about no. music production. So, <laughs> no, let, yeah, no, let's let's do it, man. Let's do it. Okay. Well, first, let's get your background as we dive into it. How did you end up in the world of being a session drummer? Well, you know, obviously, I very blessed. I started playing drums at, at an early age and piano at an early age, and had a you know very good education and grow, growing up in Iowa. But uh, the first live recording I ever did was with my junior high jazz band uh, in Omaha, Nebraska in 1969, which was an <laughs> amazing experience. However, that was not in the studio. So uh, my first studio experience uh, was in 1973 in Boston. And um, I was, you know, you meet all sorts of musicians at, in, at Berkeley and uh, you know, everybody's doing something different. So I got a few chances to go outside of the college and, you know, play in some really small studios. But the actual real experience happened when uh, I got asked by a lot of the uh, teachers there to become the studio drummer in the in the one studio they had in those days. And um, hmm. they asked me to come in, so I, I brought this little, you know, like 1972 18-inch Gretsch uh, bebop set in. But I, it was very small, very simple. And uh, they allowed me to leave it in there, uh, and nobody else would touch it. It was really kind of cool. So I'd come in, and I'd start overdubbing over, uh, I think people are familiar with, like, music minus one uh, stuff. So it's like... Yes. And then they were throwing things like Thad Jones, Mel Lewis charts at me. And the interesting thing about this is <clears throat> I didn't know what a click track was. I, did, I had no clue what a click track was. And... Um, for those who don't know what a click track is, it was designed years ago to sync film uh, with, you know, with audio, and, and they, they would actually use um, like a code thing. But later, uh, Yuri developed uh, a digital click, uh, and that's what they had there. There was this digital funky box made by Yuri. I think it was a seven frame, if I'm not correct. And um, they go, you're going to hear these four clicks, and they just play the chart from top to bottom. And I go, Okay. And uh, they go, let's do a little test. So I hear the four clicks. They say, can you hear the click? Good. I go, yeah. All right, let's go. So <clears throat> they started, and I played the chart top to bottom. And they go, that's great. Let's do the next chart. So that's how it started. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying the, the click stopped after the four counts, and then you just went? Or did you continue with a click after that? The click stayed in with, with the chart. Okay. Okay. Just make sure or, or, or the, the track. That worked. The track, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I've had it the other. I've had it the other way, though. Yep, yep. So where did you move from there then after Berkeley? Well, I stayed in Boston, um, let's see, almost through May of 1978 after, uh, you know, I'd, I'd left, left college basically after 75. And um, I went straight through as, as much as I could basically hang without, you know, you got a gig. You know, you just can't stay in school all the time, even though I'm not saying you shouldn't. But uh, you know, the, you, you got to go gig. So I was I was uh, working a lot in Boston with different kinds of bands, and um, I um, I was also contemplating in 1977 moving to New York. A lot of us were that are actually all out here in the Los Angeles area, and uh, mm -hmm. who are all session players. A lot of us were all going to migrate to New York, and at that particular point, the New York studio scene was uh, maybe you could see it starting to taper a little bit. And, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't, I was playing so many clubs in Boston and around the New England area that I didn't want to, I don't want to move to New York to play more clubs. Matter of fact, I could right. play clubs in New York from Boston. So right. uh, I was going to go, I was going to make the move. And then, you know, I was touring with this band called Shelter and we were uh, in Ohio, uh, touring and, and we were out there for, I don't know, a month or so and. Um, one night at this club, uh, the band Rufus and then Shaka with the band came into the club and, you know, kind of the rest was history. I, they, they sat in with me and then I ended up, uh, they asked me if I wanted to w join the band. And of course I said yes. And 
And they go, well, when can you? And I go, how about, like, now? And so I had to find a sub, <laughs> and I basically uh, went back to Boston, packed up, and drove through Iowa, which is where I was from, and then all the way to California, and uh, I uh, joined up at the end of the 1978 World Tour. Wow. wow. So that That's led like, into when you get, that led go, that led into when sessions. You get the, yeah, when you get the opportunity to go, you go. When the door opens, you don't fumble around. You take the opportunity. Definitely. That's right. That's right. Definitely. Okay, we got about a minute left. So, how long after you hit Los Angeles's front door did you get to start doing session work? Man, that's a great question. And you know, a lot of people might, might think, you know, because of my track record now, uh, you know, all the all the things I, I was immediately working. Well, I mean, I was working with Rufus, but uh, I didn't get my first session outside of Rufus for eleven months. Mm-hmm. So, so it was like uh, coming coming into nineteen seventy nine is when I really started working for other people. What was your first session? It was remember? a ba- yep. It was a bass player who now lives in Nashville named Joe Shimei. He's one of the voices on Pink Floyd's The Wall. He's a great singer and a great bass player. And he was doing it. He had a solo career, and he, he hired me, and I did his first record. Fantastic. Uh, awesome. Okay, so we'll stop right there because I see a commercial break creeping up on us in a couple seconds. And we'll be right back talking more, and we'll dive into some more of the deep technicalities of actual tracking drums and, and studio work. So we'll be right back. This is Sound Experience Powered by Intertalk Radio, the voice of the music biz. We'll be right back after this. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Hey everybody, this is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove on the Intertalk Radio Network. You know, on my show, we keep it real. Check out and listen to the interviews I've done so far with Jason Sheff of Chicago, the most recorded drummer in the history of music, John J.R. Robinson, and guitar legend Al DiMiola, to name a few. Come journey with me through the rhythm of the music business. Every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. Are you ready to get your groove on? Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page, mozeguitars.com, 619-698-1185. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, CEO and founder of VinVillage.com and the Wine and Dine Show on Vin Village Radio. Do you have a wine, event, product, or service to promote? Then contact VinVillage.com to reach thousands of wine lovers across the country. Vin Village connects like-minded wine enthusiasts with unique and exclusive wines, events, products, and services. To learn more, contact us on VinVillage.com. Vin Village is where wine lovers connect.
This is Sound Experience, the show that explores the vast world of audio production through the experiences of our guests and the ears of your host, mixing engineer and producer Tim Dolbear. Hey, welcome back. We're talking to John J.R. Robinson about session drumming and recording drums and stuff like that. And let me throw right back into the conversation with when you went past that first session um, doing that album, moving on from there, what was the big catalyst that moved you from that to all of a sudden you are in big sessions well, for a high-profile artist? Um you know, Rufus was in existence. Uh, I joined them. We were signed uh, already when I joined them to ABC Dunhill Records, which a lot of the, the uh, elder people would remember with Steppenwolf's label, uh, mm-hmm. Steely Dan, th- that sort of thing. And um, so we got there. We we had a solo deal right when I, I got, got on board. We got a solo record. So we had done the record. It was without Chakra. And because um, she was veering on a solo m- moment at that time. So that solo record basically was called Numbers. And I had actually brought Freddie Herbert into that record. And everybody had you know, got a chance to write. It was a very good learning experience for me uh, because I was coming off the road playing hard and um, you know, kind of a young buck and sometimes playing too much. And the biggest mistake I was making was overloading the microphones. And our producer and engineer of that record was Roy Halley. And Roy Halley was an extremely famous uh, Grammy-winning successful engineer of Simon and Garfunkel. And he was the one who recorded Bridge Over Troubled Water. So he was our producer, and he was he came in, and uh, he basically gave me a quick tutorial education about um, overloading mics and sound, mic sound pressure. And it took me uh, a, a little bit of time to understand that and grasp it and then channel that through, you know, a drummer's body and make it come out. You know, when right. you're used to playing hard live, because, you know, you know, you know, live is, you know, today it might be a little better and more controlled. But, you know, in the older days, it was it was live. And um, yeah. You know, in the studio, you have all these variables. So that that was basically that record was almost a calling card for me and uh, working with the master Quincy Jones. Great, great. So tell us a little bit about that, if you would. Well, he, you know, I actually just saw him uh, yesterday. So it's uh, oh, cool. He is doing fantastic. I'm so so proud of him. Um, but. Um, Quincy um, was contacted. Uh, actually, I met him before I started working for him uh, at uh, this concert hall in Los Angeles and sat right with him. And then our, our managers at the time, Mark Hartley and Larry Fitzgerald, um, introduced me to him uh, later and said, uh, you know, this is Johnny, this is from Rufus, and he went to Berkeley. And Quincy was, you know, had gone to Berkeley, so we always liked Berkeley guys. And um, <laughs> then they set up a deal where uh, Quincy was going to produce Rufus and Chaka Khan again. We got back together, and this was in 1979, and that was when we went over from ABC Dunhill. Every, all the groups that were on ABC Dunhill, like I mentioned earlier, you know, with Steely mm-hmm. Dan and the Crusaders and uh, Steppenwolf, everybody went over to MCA. And Quincy then produced our album Master Jam. And uh, that's, you know, Quincy could have called studio guys at, uh, at, you know, at that particular vintage, but... Uh, he liked what he was hearing with the band, and that's kind of developed that. And you know, we had a number one record on that album, so it was uh, it was a great move. Very cool, very cool. And that uh, slingshot you into all kinds of different things. It sounds like it did. I mean, and and it's interesting with the Quincy uh, situation. We went right directly from Master Jam, right into Off the Wall. I mean, I, I, it was probably not even a, a week later. And I, you know, I was basically the, uh, the the constant on that, and and then from after Off the Wall came out, which I don't know how many number one records it had on it, at least four. Um, right. I get a call from Diana Ross, and she goes, I, "I just want I just want the drummer that's that's on Off the Wall." I just I go okay, <laughs> no so problem. Then, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll be right over. Exactly. And, and, uh, and what's your address again? No, I'm kidding. And yeah. um, 
<laughs> so we went in and uh, we cut um, uh, Missing You uh, mm. with, with the great Abraham Laboreal Sr. Um, on bass. And you know, all that same time, it just the phone started ringing. And, uh, you know, I, I remember, um, I mean, there was like a lot of Lionel Richie work uh, all at that same time in 81 and 82. And um, I remember the old Steve Gadd story when he was so busy that he would take his phone and unplug it and throw it. So it's like, I don't want to be that guy. Yep. Well, then, okay, so it sounds like the way you broke into it was, I hate to use the terminology, but very organic. It was through people you met, uh, opportunities that you got to do. Being able to, I'm sure, show up on time and play the part obviously plays a big part in it. Uh, But it's a totally different world out there now. Uh, studio wise and I know you're not faced with you know you're not starting at this point uh, in 2016 you you have a very established career what advice do you have for a drummer that's studied and uh, has the chops and is trying to get into the uh, session drummer world yeah, that's a great question. I, I get that asked ask that question a lot. Oh, and, I'm sure. <laughs> um, you know, uh, 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 there's so many variables even to that question. Um, the music yeah. industry, or what we call it, um, has transformed into this uh, digital download domain, um, which is very, you know, it's uh, the word compressed, I think, is, a, is an understatement. Um, but, you know, th- there's also a lot more musicians out there than there was, um, you know, 39, 40 years ago. And right. the mu- musicians keep multiplying. And I'll, I'll be honest, their their talent level is huge. It's uh, There's mm-hmm. so much talent in, in today's musical crop. So what does that say? There's a lot more competition. So for a drummer to try to get out there somehow, A, to either be a studio drummer, which, I, you know, I've not really met a lot of guys that say, you know, I just want to be a studio drummer. Most guys, you know, they want to be out on stage and uh, that right. sort of thing. I don't necessarily consider myself one or the other. I just consider myself a musician. So that's what mm-hmm. I would want these young young people to to think that way. Um, right. They have to obviously be clear in head and mind. Um, you have to master your craft. Uh, I have a lot of people... Uh, mostly drummers that say, well, sometimes, you know, I don't read very well. Uh, is that going to deter me from getting the gig? And I said, <clears throat> it probably won't, but my recommendation is learn to read. Right. And, and, and then channel that reading. And, and me personally, I'll take gigs maybe in downtime or, you know, just weird time in my, in my life where sometimes the reading is a challenge. It's, it's, it's a good... Uh, exercise for your mind so i'll do that just to keep the chops up that way but uh, they need to do that they need to be like i said clear in mind um they need to have a groove uh, of Mm. some of something that represents their own individual style so they they don't want to be some clone of somebody else and uh we have we have a lot of those out there now and uh um, they need to bring something fresh to the table um, I also recommend that drummers uh, learn how to write songs uh, and or lyrics and uh, play some sort of a mu- musical instrument. Oh, definitely good advice there. Definitely. Definitely. The uh, studio people that we've had come into Eclectica Studios for drum sessions, uh, I've had a wide range from people just starting out, you know, who were looking for a session drum gig, and, and so it was a really tight budget. I was able to use them all the way up to Jamie Oldekal, um, or Oldeker, from, uh, who played with Eric Clapton through the 70s and the 80s, and then with Ace Freely and such. He was a session drummer in here for some session work. And uh, so I have had the full range of people in there, and the one thing I've learned is obviously talent has to be there, um, being able to play for the song has to be there and understand yeah. it's about the song. Respect the song, which is a saying I got from Prince and fits so perfectly. But also being able to get along with not only me as a studio owner and an audio engineer and a producer, but get along with my clients too. 
uh, I think personalities are very, very important because this is art. It doesn't. There's no room for the ego to come in here, and and it, it nothing gets done when the ego gets involved. Right. Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, Quincy said it best when he organized every ego on the planet during We Are the World. He basically put a <laughs> si- he put a I don't know how the heck he did it, but he put a sign outside the door, and it said, "Leave, leave your egos at home." Or leave your egos at the door, I think is what it said. Right. And, um, you know, I could tell some stories, but uh, I'm not going to start bashing on any of my fellow brethren. But, you know, the, you see things in the studios when, when you have, uh, you know, four different egos in there and mm-hmm. um, people that can't get along. And, I mean, that's kind of like why bands break up is because right. if somebody has some sort of an opinion that steps on the other guy's opinion – and and uh, it's it's really important to just let everything kind of meld and and uh, you know you breathe with each other and and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, yes, I mean it's it, art. <laughs> it's art. Yeah, but pr- you know the Prince concept is right, and and that's one thing I learned even as a young child and through Quincy is it's all about the song. You yep. know, it's not a, it's not about that drum fill at at two minutes and thirteen seconds into the song. <laughs> That or you know after the second chorus where the, oh, my God I need to I need to stand out yes I need to, exactly you know, nobody gives a crap about that and I think <laughs> I, I I told this hang uh, on we're running into a commercial time uh, we'll I, grab I that on, as soon as we get back and also it's time for us to dive in drum miking and some drum miking techniques so we'll be right back with sound experience powered by Intertalk Radio the voice of the music biz we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on InterTalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page, mozeguitars.com, 619-698-1185. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on InterTalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Hey everybody, this is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove on the InterTalk Radio Network. You know, on my show, we keep it real. Check out and listen to the interviews I've done so far with Jason Sheff of Chicago, the most recorded drummer in the history of music, John J.R. Robinson, and guitar legend Al DiMiola, to name a few. Come journey with me through the rhythm of the music business. Every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. Are you ready to get your groove on? Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beat, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Has your business been appified? Are you tired of doing marketing that doesn't deliver results? Mobile apps build loyalty and quality retention. Your app from UPG Mobile puts your business on their mind and at their fingertips. UPG Mobile will give you a custom app highlighting how you are unique targeting your message, and improving your open rates. Appify your business and amplify your presence with your customers at upgmobilemarketinggroup.com.
This is Sound Experience, the show that explores the vast world of audio production through the experiences of our guests and the ears of your host, mixing engineer and producer Tim Dolbear. Hey, we're back for the second half of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio, your voice of the music biz. Big shout out to some more of our sponsors, FrontEndAudio.com, your ultimate pro audio dealer. The Blackbird Academy, hands-on training for studio and live sound, Great River Electronics, and Source Connect by Source Element. Today we are on talking with session drummer and live drummer extraordinaire John J.R. Robinson. And I gotta, I'm going to change us to into the studio, so no more just the your history, but let's Let's dive in deep in some of the other stuff. When you show up for a session that you're not recording at your own studio, so when you've been called in to do an album, how involved are you in getting your sound? Are you, you know, kits, uh, microphone choices, any of that stuff? How involved do you get? Well, yeah, I, I, I you know, I have a full studio here, and I also mm-hmm. have uh, my other studio drums down uh, in storage. So let's say I get a session uh, this Thursday at, you know, somewhere like Capitol or somewhere. Um, I'll call my cartage, and, uh, and it's John, and I'll say, you know, this is this kind of a session. Uh, bring this set. And normally we always bring the cymbals. Uh, that, that is enough of variety that I can play any style of music. So he, uh, that's all, always coming with us. We always bring an extra snare case with probably about, I don't know, 15 snares in it or something. It depends. Uh, but I have my basic setup uh, of, with DW and Piesty, uh and we'll start from there. Um, if it's you know kind of a, a lighter, higher pitched, or more jazzy situation, I might bring a different set, and I'll have a uh, it'll be tuned up high. So then at that point, they're there. I, I get to the session early. Uh, I'll talk to the engineer, and I, I kind of know what we're going to do in advance uh, because we've been doing this for years. I mean, of course, mm-hmm. <laughs> the older days there. There were times where you'd show up and, I, and we're we're recording what, you know? <laughs> uh, are are you kidding? Wow. Okay. All right. You know, like like for example, years and years ago, we were I, we were working with somebody. I think it was somebody overseas, and uh, they wrote this chart, and and they did not want they wanted sixteenth note drum fills, mostly on the toms, and so I go, all right, this is cool, sure, man. So I'm gonna go like. And the guy, guy looks at me and goes, no syncopation. I just want straight what? 16th fills. He just wants... That's all he wants. Yeah. I go, oh, how exciting. Yeah. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, I go, okay. You're, you're writing the check, buddy. Uh, so yeah. so you, you, learn, you learn what to do that. But um, yeah. That, that's kind of the way it, it, the process starts, and then you work with the engineer. And you know, I, I'll, I I'm, I'm probably interrupting one of your questions, but um, uh, I generally the engineers I know I trust. Uh, if it's some guy I see that's got some sort of really weird mic on the snare drum, and because he saw it on a video or something, I'll hear it first. I, I'll actually give him the benefit of the doubt. And if it sounds awful, I am gonna. I'll immediately say something. Mm, good. So you are involved to some point. It sounds like. Yes, I guess I skated that answer with a three-minute answer. But yes, I, no, I, no, I, it, would, it works. Yeah, yeah I'm. I'm involved. Um, you know, there were times when we did. Um, uh, God bless Merle Haggard. We did Merle Haggard's mm-hmm. last record, uh, Chicago Wind. And um, it was fantastic. A great Lee Scalar and bass and a bunch of the just the A veteran Nashville players. And normally I'll go in and I'll set up my own Q mix. Or if we don't have these, you know, these custom boxes now, and a lot of the studios do, um, they'll usually give me a kick snare and, and then left, right, full drums. Uh, but um, it, this record, uh, uh, the producer goes, we're all going to be on the same track. Uh, we're all going to be on the same queue. Nobody's going to get any more than anybody else. Everybody's going to the exact same level. And I go, you know, at first I go, oh, I shunned a bit. And then I all of a sudden I put my earphones on. I go, this is fantastic. So <laughs> that was the other side of the coin, you know. <laughs> We've actually talked about that on the show of, of uh, sending cue mixes and stuff because I, I had available at the studio where you could mix your own. 
and I ran into so much trouble with musicians because not everyone was experienced uh, enough to be uh, disciplined, you could say. So I had vocalists running up my their volume, and of course their pitch um, intonation disappears at that point right. as they get louder and louder in the headphones and flatter and flatter in life. Um, so I end up taking that out, and we're controlling everything again from the control room with really, really good results. So, okay, well, in miking up, I have a couple of questions that came in from from listeners. Um, Justin Smith wrote, I thought this was a really good one. The 10 inch tom. It's not tuned to the same note as the snare drum, but I'm g- always getting the snares rattling when that tom is hit. How do you wow, deal I, with such a thing? Yeah, Justin, that's a that's a great question. Um, yeah. I normally don't use a 10 inch tom. And I could okay. just leave it. I could I could leave it at that. But, <laughs> nope, but, nope, nope. <laughs> but but I'm not I'm not going to do that. Um, listen, I've had the same problem with a twelve. And, right, absolutely. And, and it's not just the fact. Let's say you put them in a closet, you know, with your coats, and uh, in, in, are you going to get the same sympathetic uh, vibrations and, and and pitch rings? But you know, you could be at uh, Conway or uh, uh, you know at uh, Henson or somewhere where you you still might get them. You know. Uh, in a, in a large, really a pro room. So mm-hmm. what I do is, and if you're used to, let's say you are using a six and a half inch snare drum, uh, with your 10 inch Tom and you, and you know, a 10 inch Tom will tune low. So w- what I generally do is, um, w- with the 12 is I'll, uh, and I'm really happy with the snare drum, let's say for this particular song. Um, I will, uh, tune the Tom up only one lug and I'll try to figure out uh and just you know keep keep hitting the snare in the middle not no rim shots by the way hit it in the middle and keep and just tune the one lug and if that doesn't take care of that problem then what I would suggest is detune all six of the or eight of those lugs just maybe a sixteenth of a turn and bring the tom to, to the left to be clear you're talking you're talking about the the tuning lugs on the tom or the snare? Tom. Okay, continue, please. So what? if you can't adjust it by bringing the tom lug up a slight bit, if it doesn't go away, then then go dra- drastic and radical. Detune that the, the 10-inch tom down, like take all your lugs and detune them slightly. So, you know, you want to make sure your, your tom still does ring, and it want, you still want it to bend from top to, you know, bottom. You want to have it a curve. You don't want to have a, a, a straight, even pitch. But uh, if that doesn't work, uh, then, you know, you could try a little bit of gaff tape or, uh, you know, some sort of a edge muffler, just a little bit. But obviously you do want, you know, your three or four toms uh, to be... Uh, uh, you know, consistent and, you know, of the family nature. So either that or Justin is uh, throw that 10-inch Tom away and get a 12. Right, right. Well, I've, like you said, I've had it with a 12. So Absolutely. I've had those... it with a 13, too, actually. <laughs> Here's another question for you. Uh, actually, we'll take this from Justin also. Have you ever recorded with V-drums or an electronic drum kit? Absolutely. Uh, m- many, 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 and multiple times. I- I'm actually a rolling artist. Uh, mm-hmm. I was I was one of the original Roland V drum artists years ago, and and uh, then kind of came back on board. Um, the nice thing about, I mean, you know, I know that the you know churches and and uh, you know certainly public controlled environments uh, like electronic drums, um, I use them obviously for um, you know recording work here in my studio and uh, uh, that sort of thing. You have to be very careful though when you're working on electronic drums that you don't play too hard, you know, the nice thing about playing on acoustic drums and real cymbals is that you get this give and take with your body, and electronic drums, that can be masked, you know, and and, uh, you just have to be very careful about that. Um, I always look like this, you know, if I'm a carpenter, I'm going to build this house, I have a tool bag, and, you know, the electronic drums are in that bag. Got it. Oh, that's a good way to put it. Good way to put it. If you play acoustic guitar, play electric, play a dobro. See? Know them all. Okay, here's one. Hi-hat bleed into the snare drum mic. Wow. That's a very good technical question. Uh, first of all, it happens all the time. Uh, right. It's, it's always happened. I mean, you know, if we were to, you know, you and I were to pull up some, uh, some Kinks record from 67, 
You know, mm-hmm. it's it, it's going to be in there. But um, uh, I I do. You know, I'm a blue mic artist, uh, but I do love a Shure SM57, which is probably the oldest, cheapest, greatest <laughs> mic ever made. And uh, that's that's probably the best elimin- elimin- eliminating uh, hi-hat bleed. But uh, a quick story, which I'm going to probably um, bring up on my show uh, this week uh, for Bruce, is Bruce was the master, Bruce Swedeen, uh, of mm-hmm. uh, el- eliminating hi-hat bleed into the snare mic. So, you know, the the first thing you do is you, you have to position your mic, your, your hi-hat mic, away from the exact attack of the middle of the snare drum. You don't, you don't okay. want your hi-hat mic facing the middle of the snare drum. And I think a lot of drummers, uh, uh, or, you know, maybe engineers too, I don't know, in that positioning. You also, you know... If if you're using like a KM84 in the hi hat, it'll it'll pick up the whole kit, even though that's one of the oh, most yeah. des- desirable hi hat mics of all time. Um, it, you know that's why in the old days, you know, cats used to use SM7s on, on a hi hat. In my studio here, I'm using a blue. It's called a mouse, and it's almost mm. like a it's almost like a FET 47. It's like more of that outside bass drum mic. Yes, yes. Uh, it's it's beautiful, warm. Um, uh, so just, you know, watch your positioning on your hi-hat mic. Okay. We'll be right back, and we'll continue on that line of questioning. You're listening to Sound Experience, powered by Intertalk Radio, the voice of the music this. We'll be back in a few minutes. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dog? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beat, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hey everybody, this is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove on the Intertalk Radio Network. You know, on my show, we keep it real. Check out and listen to the interviews I've done so far with Jason Sheff of Chicago, the most recorded drummer in the history of music, John J.R. Robinson, and guitar legend Al DiMiola, to name a few. Come journey with me through the rhythm of the music business. Every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. Are you ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing, and it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Has your business been appified? Are you tired of doing marketing that doesn't deliver results? Mobile apps build loyalty and quality retention. Your app from UPG Mobile puts your business on their mind and at their fingertips. UPG Mobile will give you a custom app highlighting how you are unique, targeting your message, and improving your open rates. Appify your business and amplify your presence with your customers at upgmobilemarketinggroup.com. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page, mozeguitars.com, 619-698-1185. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear.
This is Sound Experience, the show that explores the vast world of audio production through the experiences of our guests and the ears of your host, mixing engineer and producer Tim Dolbear. Hey, welcome back to the last segment of Sound Experience, powered by Intertalk Radio, the voice of the music biz. So, in my experience with tracking drums, um, which I love, I think it's one of my favorite things to do is drum tracking, dealing with the hi-hat bleeding into the snare drum mic uh, kind of goes in a couple different directions. I have, uh, I've started with, of course, you put the microphone directly under the hi-hats, and that way you try to get as much rejection as possible, but then it ends up still going into the mic anyway. Uh, while talking with a friend of mine, he suggested, listen, if it's going to bleed, you might as well make it sound good when it bleeds. So then I started moving the microphone to the 12 o'clock position, which would then allow uh, the sound that leaks in at least not be muffled and uh, lacking high end. It would actually be a more complimentary sound to the hi-hats. Uh, and it was actually not any louder than when I had the microphone over at the, you could say, the 10 o'clock position kind of un- underneath the hi-hats trying to reject it. It really was the same volume. It just sounded nicer. So in coming from the days of, of everything bleeds into everything, how is the bleed sound, and you want it to sound good, that, of course, made the bleed sound the best. But as a mixing engineer nowadays, I have hi-hats show up in the snare mic, every time on every session just about that I get in from all over and uh, having a uh, loud snare mic or sorry a loud hi-hat bleeding into the snare runs into all kinds of trouble in mixing because if you if it's too loud and you try to take some of it out you obviously are going to run into a situation especially if you do any type of gating if you if you're getting it down 6 db or 12 db on the we're talking about the snare track gating it down some you're going to run into every time the snares hit the hi hat uh, becomes very loud and goes pss at the same time changing the sound of not only the snare but of course it makes it sound oddball where all of a sudden the hi hat jumps out every time a snare is hit uh, things that I've used to combat that have been moving the hi hat farther away from the snare mic if, or the snare, which of course you got to make sure the drummer is still comfortable. But even one inch helps hugely. Anything you want to add to that? <laughs> wow. Well, that's. I mean, it, a mouthful. No. Well, first of all, uh, I know in mixing, uh, you guys have your uh, you know your gating options and your and your you know rolling out. Uh, you know, making sure all the bottoms roll off the hi-hat mic and those sort of things. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it, but it all starts with positioning. And, and, and let's just eliminate the hi-hat mic altogether right now. And as you mm-hmm. well know, the drum sound starts with the overheads uh, yes, and then works its way back down. So the hi-hat is just a... I mean, they didn't use hi-hat mics in the old days. So uh, the hi-hat mic is a complimentary mic. Hi-hats today are... Um, there's a lot more frequencies coming out of the hi hat symbols today, so obviously, and then the way music has uh, evolved, um, you know, there's the, there's uh, a, a lot of uh, more information that's 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 being you know mixed in, in, in down to two tracks. So, I right. guess the, the 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 concept is uh, first of all, I never ever mic from underneath the, the hi-hats. It's, al- it's always over the hi-hats. I think underneath the hi-hats, you, you, you're going to lose uh, a millisecond or so of attack from the top top of the stick or the beat of the stick. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's I think, the, the important point there. Um, if you mic directly off the hi-hat, you're going to get pops. Uh, so, I, I, you know, I like to mic the hi-hat kind of like what you said. It's between 10 and 12. Uh, and uh, it, you know, the, the great guys like, you know, Bruce Swedeen and, and people like that, they'll mic really pretty close to that top cymbal. And that always kind of freaked me out a little bit because let's say I got a little rambunctious and opened up the hi-hats too wide. I'm going to go scrape that four, 451, you know, or 452. Right. I mean, I go, oh, and all of a sudden it's like a beautiful point in the song and, and you hear, whoosh, like, oh, yep. man. So, uh, so I've noticed... Uh, recent engineers, uh, they're miking, uh, miking me at an angle, maybe at 11 o'clock, but facing away from the snare drum. Um, mm. And, you know, I don't, 
on my playback on my console, I don't have the hi hat coming back at Unity at all. No, you know it's, it's way it's, down. Yeah, it's there just for accents, just the detailed. Yeah, I mean Little you don't want to you don't want to lose it, but um, you know I, it's it's an interesting concept. And l- let me tell you a quick story, which uh, sure. you know, I'll I'll bring up uh, you know when I when I interview the great Bruce Swedeen. But um, I, I come into a session years and years ago. It was from Michael, and I see an Atlas mic stand with the round bottom in between, right to the left. Of I think Bruce was using a, a a 52 in the top snare or 51 or 451 I think I don't think he was using a 57 AKG uh, and mm-hmm. and he had, he had the, on this mic stand a piece of uh, like eight inch by two inch by eight inch piece of lead wrapped with a packing blanket screwed on to this Atlas mic stand and it was literally it could have been 10 inches and it was literally blocking right to the left of the snare mic, but for me to play the hi-hat part or any hi-hat part, I had to raise my right arm over it oh. to get oh. to the hi-hats, and, and I just basically said, uh, this, this could be a bit of an obstacle. He goes, yeah, you can do it. Just just play. Just like that. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. But, you know, if you listen to those records, uh, uh, there's not a lot of hi-hat bleed. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Well, you had mentioned that the sound starts with the overheads, and we only have uh, three minutes left, so it's kind of a big subject to dive into. What are your favorite positionings that capture it the most natural for you as a drummer the way you like to hear it? Where do you like to place overheads or side fills or however you want to place them? That's interesting because, you know, each engineer has his own thing. Um, My personal engineer is uh, Steve Sykes. And uh, his concept is, and we use blue dragonflies uh, for our overheads. Mm-hmm. And Steve is of the of the ilk where you know he has a, a measure with him, and he measures the left overhead, the right overhead. They're up probably oh two and a half to three feet over me, uh, and he measures with this um, measure the distance from the left overhead to the center of the snare drum has to be the exact same distance from the right overhead to the, to the center of the snare. Thusly, when you're looking at the drums or f- looking from the front, my left overhead could be, you know, six inches so or so higher, but it is more, it's exactly equidistant. So then right. when I'm playing, uh, just if you bring the overheads up and playing a groove or whatever, it will sound just perfect. It'll, it'll sound um, like you really want to hear the drum sets before you put it on the low end, you know. So they're actually, if you could say, if you raised your hands straight above your head and opened up your arm span just a little bit, they're in that area, or are we talking about a farther spread? They're about, um, unfortunately, I can't bring this mic over by the kit, but um, <laughs> they're, they're about, uh, if I raise my arms up uh, and spread them out about, uh, I don't know, three and a half feet, Maybe mm-hmm. four, maybe almost four feet wide and about uh, two and a half. Probably, uh, if I were to raise the the length of the stick up, which is like what six yeah. sixteen inches up, there's probably they're probably about two feet higher, uh, and okay. spread out spread out almost about three and a half, uh, spread out about four feet. Great. So it's a spread stereo pair above you as opposed to the style of putting one straight off the right and straight off the left of the drum kit kind of thing. However. Drum sets yep. two and three here in my studio. <laughs> I I use the Glenn Johns method of of miking. Okay. We we use four mics, uh, running through mm-hmm. Day Kings, uh, Jeff Day Kings beautiful mic pre's, and mm-hmm. uh, I have two different really kind of uh, wild wild sets. One is a bebop set made by DW, and the other is a 1942 uh, Leedy calfskin 28 inch bass drum Gene Krupa set. Each one of those we mic. The left overhead is directly over the snare drum, about two and a half feet. The right overhead is directly off the right floor tom, about six mm-hmm. inches. And then the oh, snare and the kick running are out normal. of time. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. And when's your show start? My show starts this Wednesday, the 25th, uh, Pacific Time, 2 to 3, Vinyl Night. Perfect. Perfect. On Intertalk Radio. Okay. Thank you for joining us on Sound Experience, powered by Intertalk Radio. Now, go make some music. 
Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dog? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats shredding guitar or making the crowd roar whatever you dream pitbull audio can help make it happen we are pitbull audio we want you to play it loud pitbullaudio.com hi this is tim dolbear host of sound experience here on intertalk radio and source connect by source element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in austin texas and the ws radio station in san diego now with source connect not only can we communicate in real time and with hd audio but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that i can use it for real-time adr work remote recording and overdubbing and it even allows me to remotely control a daw source connect by source element affordable high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs which sandwich is healthy and tasty? Which sandwich can come on bread or in a bowl? Which sandwich comes 51 different ways so it's always your way? A which which sandwich? Stop into our shop in Hazard Center. We're upstairs from the Hazard Center Digiplex. Bring in your movie ticket. We will add a free drink and chips to your sandwich order. Or order online at whichwhich.com and we will have it ready and waiting. W-H-I-C-H-W-I-C-H. Whichwhich.com. Hey everybody, this is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove on the Intertalk Radio Network. You know, on my show, we keep it real. Check out and listen to the interviews I've done so far with Jason Sheff of Chicago, the most recorded drummer in the history of music, John J.R. Robinson, and guitar legend Al DiMiola, to name a few. Come journey with me through the rhythm of the music business. Every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. Are you ready to get your groove on? Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you've found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit Moe'sGuitars.com or their Facebook page, M-O-Z-E-Guitars.com, 619-698-1185. 